Hello everyone, I'm Nicole Spore and today I am going to take you through a first look or walkthrough of how to put together my new felt acorn. This is part of my new collection for Spellbinders, which are some wonderful stitching dies. With the felt acorn, I'm going to take you through all of the dies that you get with this set, as well as how to put together the acorns and the leaves on camera. There are some additional pieces, which I will show you here in a little bit. The goal behind these wonderful felt stitching dies is that you can create some beautiful home decor items. You can also create ornaments, all kinds of wonderful things, as you will see. Each die in this collection will have its own first look walkthrough of how to put together these, and so I hope you will enjoy them. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to leave them down in the comments, and I will hopefully answer anything that you may have. Um, they are very fun. And I do want to mention that while these are dimensional, you can see that they are Oh, got some fuzz stitched on the front and the or stitched together to create more of a plush design they do have pretty low profile as i decided to stuff mine with batting quilt batting instead of polyester fiber fill if you use polyester fiber fill or even cut up scraps of your leftover wool felt after you have die cut the pieces um, they'll be a little bit more rounded it's completely a personal preference and I will talk about that in the how-to instructional part of the video. But in addition to being able to die cut these to create dimensional plush that will be cute stuck in bowls with other decor, you could tuck these into wreaths. You're going to see a lot of different examples. You can also stitch these and I'm going to show you this on a different um, with a different set of dies, but you can stitch them flat to another piece of felt. In this case, I used the felt pumpkin and I stitched this to a piece of felt and sewed it into a pillow. Now, I know if you do not sew, do not fret. You can stitch it to another piece of felt and cut it into a banner shape that you can hang on your wall. You can put it into an embroidery hoop. There's a lot of different ways to do this and I will be sharing lots of those. But I do want to mention that you can take any of these, stitch them flat to a piece and not create a dimensional element and have a beautiful decor piece. I will of course have video tutorials sharing how to make this. I have some Christmas pillows. Um, obviously, these are a couple of fall projects that we want to be doing right now, but also lots of Christmas. So um, I hope you enjoy the tutorial on how to put together this felt acorn. This set is called Autumn Acorn House. I'm going to take you through the components that come in the set first. Here you can see a acorn piece. It comes with the top the bottom and the layering pieces, three leaves, so three different shaped leaves that you can use with the acorn or other felt projects. The front of the top of the acorn has the holes for layering and the back does not. There is also a house die and layering piece. You can add the little door to that. Now I would stitch it to the front of the acorn if you're going to make it the acorn house. I have them separate here for demonstration purposes. We also have two windows, a cute little squirrel, and a tiny little acorn that you can use for fun. So there are a lot of different ways to use this. Today, we are going to be putting together the large acorn and the three leaves together on camera. You might see different colors of felt in the video, and that is simply just whatever I chose to stitch at that time, but the process is always the same. The video will showcase how to put together a dimensional acorn plush. I've die cut the front and back of the acorn using the die there on the right side of the screen. 
I've also used that same die to die cut two layers of warm and natural quilt batting. This is a very thin quilt batting that runs through the die cutting machine super easily. Now, if you don't have quilt batting on hand, I am a quilter, so I do tend to have that on hand. You can pick some up relatively um, inexpensive at a craft shop or whatever. It just depends on what kind of batting you pick up. Polyester fiber fill is also a great option, as is another piece of felt, uh, wool felt. Um, or little felt pieces that you cut up to use as stuffing to place inside. It's completely up to you what you want to do there. Now, I don't want the batting to stick out along the sides, so I do cut it off a little bit so that I'm only stitching through the felt layers. For the top of the acorn, we have a front and a back piece. The back doesn't have the extra stitching holes, the front does. In addition, we have the layering pieces for the acorn, which include all of the little teardrop shapes. I've also, from the solid top of the acorn piece, cut two pieces of the warm and natural quilt batting that I can sandwich. I want the top of the acorn and the bottom to both have the same thickness. Now, you can really cut this any way. You're going to see me put this together here in a minute, and I do cut off those scallops, so that was probably a little bit of a wasted effort, but I did want to mention that. So there is our top and our bottom. That is going to be the only thing that has stuffing in my project today. Keep in mind, you can definitely do this however you want. For the layering pieces, there's three sizes. From the large, you'll die cut that die once. The small, you'll also die cut once. And from the medium size, which has three of those teardrops, you're going to die cut this twice for a total of six. You're going to have 10 layering pieces to place on the top of your acorn. Now, if you don't want to use these, you don't have to. You can always do a solid top of your acorn, so you could make the top and the bottom the same, or you could use embroidery floss to stitch. The layering pieces are super cute and fun, though. For each of the leaves, I have die cut two pieces of felt. We have that burnt orange, a beautiful mustard yellow, and then a green. There are three different leaf shapes in this, and we are not going to be sandwiching batting in any of these. You will see as you stitch the two layers of felt together, it really makes them substantial enough. We will be doing the leaves last, and we're going to start with the acorn. Beginning with the top of the acorn piece, I am going to find the stitching hole. We're going to come up from the back and what I like to do is leave a tail. We're going to tie this into a knot here in a minute. And then we're going to simply start layering on those teardrop shapes and stitching the little X's to build the design. Now a couple of schools of thought regarding the die cut holes that you get when you die cut the felt. I know some felt stitchers really love to poke all of those little holes out, either with the blunt tip of your needle or with a paper clip that you have pulled apart. You can pop all those little holes out. I have talked about this in previous felt stitching videos that I don't do that. I tend to just let my needle pop them out as I stitch. It does make it slightly easier if you pop them out ahead of time, so I just wanted to make mention of that. Once I have gone through one of the teardrop shapes for the front or top of my acorn, I'm just going to tie it into a knot so it's secure, trim off the excess from the one end, and now I am going to continue stitching each of these. I will stitch all of this here on camera, but I will speed it up a little bit. Keep in mind that you can slow this down at any time by clicking the speed here on YouTube to stitch along. Now, it is a stitching project, and that does mean it is not the fastest project ever, um, and nor should it be. I don't want to mislead and say that these are super fast and easy, because it's not. We are stitching, and stitching does take a little bit of time, but I think that it is so worth it. 
One of the benefits of having felt stitching dies is that for anyone who loves to craft with felt and loves to make the felt plush shapes, but doesn't love having to get a template or a pattern and cut them out yourself and deal with the imperfections and guess where to stitch them together, stitching dies take away all of those, you know, unknowns for you. It makes it very easy to have a beautiful uniform look. All of the pieces are cut exactly to size and our die cut machines just die cut this 100% wool felt like butter. It is amazing. I highly, highly recommend stitching dies. This is really the only way I enjoy stitching felt is I love having those guidelines. You'll notice in some of the felt stitching dies in this collection that there may be some pieces that do not have stitching holes in them. If the pieces were determined to be too small, that a stitching hole would just rip through the sides, we did not add them. In those instances, I will show you how you can either glue or hand stitch those pieces in place. That is completely up to you and optional. The other things that you can consider when you are stitching your pieces together are things like you might want to replace the die cut eyes on either the felt reindeer, the felt fox with a button or a sequin or some other type of shape or product, I should say. So there are ways to customize. You could add beads and sequins to the top of your felt acorn. There are lots of embellishments out there that you may want to try to incorporate into your design. In some of the videos, I will be showing how to sandwich twine in your felt plush to make them hanging ornaments or how to string some thread through the top of your felt plush so that you can make it a hanging ornament. I love having these felt ornaments on my tree. I make felt ornaments for my kids, even though they're adults now, every year. Um, it's just something fun to, to create and do and make with my hands. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, you don't have to make felt plush with these. I really want to encourage you to try other things with these shapes, like sewing them onto pillows, making needle books, sewing them onto bags, canvas zipper bags, things like that, customizing projects and products with these felt shapes to make it your own. There, the sky is the limit, and this really expands, um, what you can do with felt stitching and i love the felt stitching dies one of the big benefits of spellbinders felt stitching dies is that they are untabbed they do not come where they are together and you have to have wire snips to cut them apart they are they come you know you take them out of the package you start die cutting there is none of those sharp edges where you might cut yourself and it is just such a benefit in my opinion to be able to just take them right out of the package and get to creating which is what we all love a couple of things it is up to you how many strands of embroidery floss you want to use. I personally use three strands of embroidery floss for all of my stitching. That hardly ever changes. If it does, I will let you know in the video, but otherwise just know that it's gonna be three strands of DMC embroidery floss. I also recommend not keeping your floss too super long. If you do, it does tend to get tangled up. The other thing I really recommend is a sharp needle. I like to use these number five embroidery needles. They have a sharp tip to them that cuts through the felt. Now, most of the pieces do have stitching holes in them, so you don't necessarily need anything sharp, but there always are those times where you might wanna stitch onto a pillow, for example, or onto something else, and you want it to be sharp. When you get to the end, simply create a little knot. It is on the back, it will be hidden inside, and tie it off. Next, we want to stitch this top piece to a bottom piece. 
Now, I think this is extremely important. I, there are a lot of ways you could assemble the acorn. I am going to give you the easiest or what I feel like is the easiest way. I feel it's easiest to approach the acorn as front of the acorn, back of the acorn. So in this case, front of the acorn, we are stitching the top to the bottom. Once we have the top, once we have the bottom or the front and the back as it were, then we will stitch those two together. Because of this, I am stitching along this scallop line where the two pieces meet, and you can see that the stitching holes line up. I want to stitch the entire thing. There are some tips and tricks to hide your knot when you're stitching a piece together. In this case, anything will be hidden on the back, so we don't need to worry about that yet. I'm going to go up and down every other stitching hole. This is important. Right now, anything that is on the back would be hidden, but I talk about this a lot in the stitching videos. If you make sure to go up and down every other stitching hole and get in the habit of that when you are working with felt, you will have a beautiful front and back to your piece every time. Now I did start in the middle instead of the side and that was on purpose for me personally. I felt it was easiest to get those scallops lined up this way. So I went halfway all the way to the right side, up and down every other hole. I'm coming back every other hole, filling in each of those spaces. Other ways to customize, you may notice I'm using all the same color of DMC floss here you could switch that up. If you want to customize this even more and use multiple colors, you can do that. You can, the sky is the limit. Customize and make it your own. If you want to add an initial to the acorn, there are some wonderful stitching dies from Spellbinders. I will be uh, showing some examples, using some of those later on. You could totally add an initial or even just hand stitch onto the acorn. And these could be fun place setting holders for Thanksgiving or just a fun gift tag for a fall birthday. Or, you know, they could just be decorative for and be the initial of someone in your family. Make it your own. I cannot wait to see what all you guys come up with. So once I have gone back and forth to that right side, every other stitching hole, I'm going to do that the other direction. We'll basically be ending up in the center of the acorn. Take your time making sure that you're lining it up. It will be worth it when you take the front to the back and you need to line up the two halves. I often will flip my piece back and forth so that I can make sure that I am lining everything up. Aren't those layering pieces for the top of the acorn so cool? They really make this design. Once we get again to that end, we're going to just flip it, reverse it, and come right back. And again, remember, you can always slow down the video at any time if you want to watch it a little bit slower. Some of the duplicate stitching will be taken out of the video just to save a little bit of time. So now that we have the front panel stitched, we want to take the back panel, the top and the bottom, and stitch those together as well. Once you have it stitched, go ahead and knot it and trim off that excess. Now we're going to take our front and back and we want to stitch the front to the back, as I mentioned earlier. The back piece is solid and doesn't have the layering. However, if you want to stitch the layering of the acorn for both, you can very easily do that. I am trimming up my quilt batting to place inside. You'll notice that I trim it so that you can see the stitching holes all the way around. It almost goes to the edge. It doesn't have to be perfect at all because you'll never see it. So here I'm just trimming those pieces down and sandwiching them between the two layers. At this point, if you have binding clips or straight pins like for sewing, you can go ahead and pin the two layers together. You can also just hold it with your hand if you want to. 
I do generally think it's a little easier to use a binding clip or straight pins to hold those layers. When you go to start stitching, you want to come up between the two layers. Now this is the point where we do need to be a little bit more mindful of where we start and stop. And the reason being is that because we want to hide our knot in between the two layers, I start in between the two layers, and then we're going to do the same thing that we have done before, where we go up and down every other hole all the way around our acorn. Now the acorn is big enough that our thread or the thread I am using, I should say, is not long enough to go around twice because you're basically going around each shape twice by going up and down every other hole. Because of this, I go around one time and tie it off, grab three more strands of DMC embroidery floss and go around another time. If at all possible, I really try not to run out of thread partway through the felt shape. And that is just to make it easier on you. I would rather be a little wasteful with my leftover floss than run out of, the, run out of floss partway around and have to piece it together. Now I do want to mention, you might notice that I didn't die cut the top of my acorn house super perfect. It looks like I kind of got along an edge there with the back piece. So I'm just going to be very careful with stitching my acorn together. I don't think it's going to matter very much and I didn't want to waste this top piece and die cut another piece of felt. But most of the time you'd probably have a perfect die cut piece and if you find it hard to stitch with I would recommend going ahead and die cutting another one of the top of the acorn or whatever shape it may be. We are going to continue to stitch all the way around the top of our acorn. Now another thing I want to mention is if you want to make the acorn house a plush I would stitch the door and window or windows to the front panel before you stitch the two halves together. Always be thinking of it as I'm working on the front, I'm working on the back, and then I am bringing the two pieces together. If you think of it that way, it does make it a little bit easier when you are assembling these pieces. I do kind of like to pinch the felt together as you can see me doing with my left hand here. And then I am making sure that my needle is lining those holes up and going up and down every other one. If you do ever find that your floss is starting to tangle or get knots in it, when you get the knot out, go ahead and let your needle with the thread dangle and untwist before going ahead and continuing on with your stitching. This is a great project to do while you're watching TV in the evening or maybe listening to an audiobook, whatever it is you like to do. It is a little bit easier to stitch than what I'm showing on camera when I'm not trying to hold my hands out in front of me. Um, I know that it might look kind of awkward and that's because it is a little awkward trying to make sure that I'm in range of the camera the entire time. Uh, I'm not always super successful, but I do try. So it looks like I maybe tangled up my floss, so I needed to go ahead and re-thread my needle. Now, once we get to the end of this, I will go ahead and as I mentioned, we're going to tie it off. So remember how we started in between the two layers of felt. We are going, when we get back to where we started, we're going to only push the needle through halfway so it comes out in between the two layers. And we are going to take those two ends because we should be stopping right where we started. And we are going to tie it into a little knot and trim it close to the edge of the felt. This will bury the knot in between the two layers. Then I'm going to grab three more strands of DMC embroidery floss and we're going to do the same thing again. I'm going to carefully bring my needle up in between the two layers, leaving a little tail, and then we're going to go all the way around, filling in every other stitch. 
So here is where I have come to the end going around one time, just around the perimeter. I've tied it into a knot and I'm trimming off that excess close to the edge. I didn't get it super close. I can go ahead and finish that up in a minute. Off camera, I went ahead and threaded up my needle and we're going to start again. So as I mentioned, we're going to find a spot. It doesn't matter exactly where, but we want to go up and down every other one again. So see how I'm pushing that needle in between the two layers of felt? That is how we can hide or bury that knot between the two layers. Now we're going to go up and down every other one. So I'm just gonna hold that tail out of the way and sew all the way around the perimeter of my felt acorn again. Now, most of this I will do off camera, but I just wanted to show again, just a little bit what I am doing. And I do try to keep my stitches as straight and nice as possible because that's what leaves you with the beautiful finished result. Yes, you can use these dies to die cut from paper. So if you like to stitch on paper and you want to create a paper acorn, paper pumpkin, paper reindeer, you absolutely can. Um, again, the sky is the limit. Have fun with it. Look how good that stitching looks. See how you don't have a traditional back stitch? Now for anyone who is familiar with back stitching, the reason we go up and down every other stitch is because we don't want to have that traditional back stitch look on the back of our felt piece where we have long stitches, where it looks nice on the front, but it kind of looks bad on the back. That's what we're avoiding by going up and down every other hole. So now that we're back where we started, we again came out in between the two layers. We'll take those two ends of floss, tie them into a little knot and snip the end and again, burying that knot between the two layers. And that is it for the acorn. You can thread some twine through the top. You can make a little bow and tack it to the top of your acorn. You can customize the body of the acorn, as I mentioned, with a monogram or another image. You could even hand stitch that squirrel to the top of the, or to the body of the acorn if you wanted to. Let's grab our leaves and let's sew those together. Now for the leaves, as I mentioned, we are not going to um, put any batting in between. We're starting with the largest and you can start in between the two layers if you want. Now I did, but then I kind of had a little mistake and when I took it out, that little hole tore because I wasn't very careful. Um, but I'm not going to die cut another leaf you can see my, my thread tangled, that's what happened, and then I had a hard time getting it out. I should have just been a little bit more careful. The reason I say it doesn't matter so much, and I'm sorry that it's blurring it out, I had no idea it was doing that, let's see if it refocuses, um, is the fact that we can kind of hide that knot on the back. Most of the time, you're going to be attaching, either stitching, or gluing these pieces in place on whatever you're putting them on. For the large leaf, I am going to stitch around the perimeter. Just like we did with the acorn, we want to go up and down every other hole so that the back of the leaf looks as nice as the front. Now there is veining down the center, but we're going to do that second. So the first thing is to go all the way around the perimeter. Yes, it's a lot of little stitching holes, but here is the fantastic thing about the leaves. I find that the thread, when you stitch those two halves of any of the leaves from any of the sets together, it gives stability. Not only stability, but when you add the veining to the leaves, it also gives them a little bit of texture. It allows you to kind of almost bend them a little bit. You could sandwich a little floral wire in these if you wanted to um, before you finish stitching or anything like that to give them even more texture and shape. But I love just the stitching in these felt pieces as I feel like it gives them tons of texture and movement. The largest leaf in this set is the only one that has the stitching that goes around the perimeter 
plus the veining. The other two smaller leaves that I will show you next are created exactly the same, and those only have the veining. It really just depends, it's just two different looks. I found that with my length of floss, I was able to go around this large leaf each time. So I stitched all the way around, and then I stitched all the way around again before tying it off. Then I did go ahead and get three more strands of embroidery floss so that I would have the length to work through the veining. There is a trick to the veining, and so I am going to speed through finishing going around the perimeter of the leaf and then show you how I do the veining on the leaves so that the veining is as beautiful on the front again as on the back. The goal is always to have it look as beautiful on the front as the back. Let's say you're hanging this on a glass door and you're going to see peaks of the leaves um, showing through. You don't want to see um, you know, kind of a messy back to your pieces um, and then have the front be beautiful but the back look ugly and so you're always trying to hide it. My goal is not to have to hide anything about this. And that's especially important like for ornaments that you might be hanging on your tree as well. If you like more contrast to your leaves, you could pick something darker. I tended to pick colors of floss closest to the actual felt colors, but keep in mind that just by changing up your floss that you use on the felt, it will completely change the look and all of it is beautiful and fun and it's just a great way to customize. Now, my tip for the veining on the leaves. I like to, again, start down there at the bottom. And the reason I'm starting down at the bottom of the leaf is because that is where we're more than likely going to be tacking that piece to something else. Let's say you're, in, you're tucking it into a grapevine wreath and you're gluing them in place. You're going to be probably be gluing that little tip there. So if there's a little knot, no one's going to see it. Um, and so that's where I always start and stop or where I tend to start and stop. If you find something that you like better, don't be afraid to try that. So let me tie this off now that I'm back to where I started. And we're going to grab those three other strands of floss and we are going to start down here at the bottom again. Now, when I start, I start down at the very bottom of the leaf and again, stitch every other stitch clear up to the top. So instead of starting at the bottom and going out to the veining, we are going to do a straight line through the center of the leaf. And then we're going to, when we come back down and start filling in, as we get to each intersection, we're going to branch out to those veining on the leaves. This gives you a beautiful result every time. So let's start up going uh, in that straight line. And as we come back, I'll slow it back down. So every other stitch all the way down the center of your leaf. Then once we get to the very end, we are simply going to start going back every other stitch, just like we did for the perimeter of the acorn or the perimeter of this leaf. The difference is when we get to that intersection where the first veining branches out, we're going to go out one side every other stitch and then come back every other stitch. And then we're going to go out to the other side, the one right directly across from it, same thing every other stitch, every other stitch, all the way back. I will flip it over here in a minute after we do that and show you how it looks. So right there, where that meets, this is where we're going to branch out. So you can see I stitched all the way to the end, started working my way back, and where that meets, that's where we're going to branch out. This is, I find these very relaxing to stitch. Once you figure out 
how to stitch them so that again the front looks as good as the back it is easy peasy um you kind of get addicted to stitching these they can be so beautiful you can do them in any color so we are just going to start working our way back down this side before going down the right side of the leaf You'll notice I went every other to the end and then worked myself every other all the way back to the center. Now that does mean that that center hole where the where they intersect, pardon me, that is you're going to be going up and down there a lot, but that is what makes it seamless from the front and back. So now again, we've come back to the center and we're working our way out to the right side and we are going to do this for all of the veining i will speed this up but please feel free to slow it down if you need to see it in real time now i am going to show stitching two of the leaves here on camera all of the leaves that i am doing from this collection are stitched the same I will do one of the leaves that doesn't have the perimeter stitching just so you can see it, but it's basically the veining for this leaf without that perimeter stitching. While I'm completing the stitching, I do want to talk a little bit about other Spellbinders products that are very useful and helpful for customizing your felt stitched pieces. Things like better press, tags, ribbon, any kinds of those things are going to be perfect for embellishing all of your felt stitched pieces. Uh, think the baker's twine for stitching in or threading through the top of your felt Christmas ornaments. And I'm even going to show you some of the Vivant ribbon made into a bow to tack to the top of our acorns for embellishment. So there are lots of possibilities with product that you maybe already own and love, plus anything you may have from your stash, such as seed beads, sequins, buttons, any of those kinds of things. Look at the little shape you get once all of that stitching. So remember, a little bit earlier, I talked about once you have the stitching in the veining for your leaves, how it gives them that beautiful shape. That is what you see there for that burnt orange leaf. So here is the yellow leaf. It is a little bit smaller, so the stitching does go quite a bit quicker, plus none of the perimeter stitching. But same basic technique. We're stitching tip to tip every other stitch and then coming as we come back, we will go out to the veining. And I matched my thread to the felt for this one as well. But I do think another or contrasting color of embroidery floss would look fantastic. You can even put these on other projects. I think they might even be really cute, like just glued to a picture frame if you wanted to embellish a picture frame with them. Lots of fun ideas. Okay, so once we're done with this, I did want to show kind of an idea for finishing. So as I mentioned, when you get to the end of your leaf and you're tying off that little knot and how it doesn't really matter too much where you end that, I do try to end it in between the two layers. However, that is the tip where if you're going to tack it to something, that is where I would tack it. So I like to take my floss and we're just gonna grab a color here, and we are going to sew this little bow that I put together. You can see it's this beautiful kind of burnt orange color of ribbon. We're going to tack a couple of the leaves to the top of the acorn and then tack the bow in place. Super, super simple. So I'm gonna go through the top of the acorn so that the knot is going to be hidden between the leaf and 
the top of the acorn. And the other great thing about using needle and thread to do this is that if you ever choose to maybe take it apart, all you have to do is snip this thread and then you can pull these pieces apart and use them differently. But also hot glue or liquid glue made for fabric for felt stitching would work as well. So I am layering those two leaves to the tip. So sorry that I'm off camera just like so, how cute is that? We're going to thread our needle through the knot in our little bow that we made out of the Spellbinders ribbon. And again, we're just going to kind of push that through, tack it down in place, and then knot it. And easy as that, we'll just snip or trim up the ends of our ribbon. We have a beautiful, fall decorative piece. This would look amazing tucked into a wreath. It would be cute tucked into a fall display or a decorative bowl with some other cute little bowl fillers. All kinds of fun ideas. Thank you guys so much for watching this autumn acorn house felt stitch and create dies. The supplies I used are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Thanks for watching.